I was doing a performance with a well-known rapper and I had to open up. It was my turn to get on the stage and I got on stage, I did my thing. When I came down, a voice began to speak to me and said, I need you to go to the back. And I didn't understand why I was hearing this voice, but I went to the back of the, the club that we was in, where we was performing. I sat there and it said, watch. I started to look and this rapper started rapping and doing what he do, but my eyes opened to the spirit realm where I saw these shadows. It was like dark shadows coming out of his mouth through every word that he was doing, saying, and go into the people. And I started to see how people started changing. Like they started getting more violent. The girls started getting more seductive and all of this. And next thing you know, gunshots just started to happen in the club. I run out and I'm just bawling and crying. I'm like, this is what you wanted me to see. And so the Lord said, the same spirits that torment you while you're making your music will torment others. That was the turning point. What's going on, everybody? God bless you. I am excited for you to hear, watch this new testimony. But I did want to let you know about some exciting news. We have partnered with multiple organizations, churches that are ready to help you through whatever you may be going through. Okay, now we've reached 50 million people all over the world and we have seen time and time and time again in the comment sections the needs. And, uh, and we prayed about this. We asked the Lord to, to guide us and to provide resources. And uh, thankfully, the Lord has answered and we have those resources for you. And so if you are in need of help, if you are in need of a church, if you are in need of community, if you just want to talk to somebody about struggles that you're going through or questions that you have, there will be a link in the comment section down below pinned at the top that you can click and then it will take you to a form where you can fill out your basic information and then somebody in your local community will contact you within 48 hours. We're really, really excited about this. So please take advantage of it if you need to, okay? God bless you and enjoy the new testimony. Well, Anthony, it's an honor to have you on Delafe Testimonies today. Uh, for the people who may not know you, who maybe have never seen you, could you just introduce yourself very briefly to those who are watching? Yes, sir. I'm happy to be here. Um, my name is Anthony Stanley. Um, I am the leader of Ram Global International in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, I'm a musician, worshiper, um, and just love Christ and a husband. And I have a wonderful daughter. And I'm just excited to be able to share my testimony today. Now, Anthony, you actually grew up in the church. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us what, what, what was it like growing up in the church and, um, and just tell us about your childhood. Yes. So, yes, I did. I grew up in church. Um, but prior to when my mom and dad was together, um, when I was a little kid, they got married when I was about maybe one or two. We didn't go to church. Uh, so it wasn't until my mom and dad got a divorce that my mom started going to church. And that's when I was about five years old. Mm. So um, as I was growing up in church, uh, I noticed a lot of things. Noticed um, how people are just... A little different, like um, in the body of Christ, you learn to get connected with the work of ministry. You get connected to what maybe a pastor is saying. You get connected to maybe just uh, Sunday school lessons and things of that nature. Um, and I know that the church that I was in, um, great church. I grew up wonderful and I learned a lot. But I never really had a real relationship with Christ. Um, so, again, I knew the functions of church, but I didn't know Jesus. And it wasn't until I got into my teenage years when I started to uh, sing in a choir, um, be a part of the praise and worship team, where I started to get a sense of who God was, uh, who Jesus was, uh, his presence, you know, again, through leading worship and just being a part of that kind of atmosphere. I started to really know more about him. Um, and then I went to uh, college and that's when I can say that my real authentic relationship uh, happened with Jesus Christ. Um, I had an encounter in my apartment that changed my life forever. And then before you get to, to that encounter, uh, take us a little bit more into uh, those moments in church, right? And, and experiencing God. What, what was that? like for you oh man that was, it was amazing really to 
I guess as a kid, you can't really, you don't really understand what's really happening. Um, but you know, it feels different. Um, cause I can relate to it now and that I'm older. I, I kind of understand the presence of God. I remember being seven and, uh, <laughs> I was in the choir and the choir director actually just randomly was like, Hey, come here. And I'm like, yes. And she said, I want you to lead this song. I was like, I've never led a song before. I'm only like seven. And she was like, no, I want you to sing this. And so I just started singing. And I remember the moment that I started singing, I just started weeping. And that was the first time in my life that I said, I could say that I felt the presence of God. Wow. How old were you at that time? I was seven. Wow. Yeah, I was seven. I was seven. And I felt the presence of God. I began to weep. I began to cry. And I'm like really ministering this song at seven. And so that's when I um, really developed a real love for worship and the presence of God. Between that, uh, that those moments when you started to encounter God at an early age to that moment that you, that encounter that you had in college, you said? Yes. Um, what was that that time like from from childhood to college? Were you just walking faithfully with the Lord? Um, what was that time like for you? So that time for me, um, like as I started stated a little bit earlier, it was a little different because um, in the household that I was in, we had a, and I, I like to use this term mixture. So we was one foot in and kind of one foot out. So I saw a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? To fornication, to alcoholism, to drugs and uh, cursing. And it was all kind of things that was against what the word of God tells us as Christians, how we should live. I had a mixed up life. And so in that moment, I started develop, developing a love for rap music, and I started to write secular music. Mm -hmm. And secular music, to me, became a replacement uh, of my father um, because music in general gave me uh, hope, it gave me inspiration, and it pushed me to try to be something that I thought I wanted to be. Some, someone famous, somebody mm -hmm. that had money, uh, you know, someone that people knew or respected. Mm -hmm. So music to me was that uh, avenue to get me there. So secular music is what I started to do because of the mixed up kind of lifestyle that was in my home. Yeah. Did, did you get up in that mixed up as well? Or was it just something that was around you? It was something that was kind of around me. Um, it was more so watching um, my mother, because uh, I was I was just in the household with my mom. After my mom and dad got a divorce when I was five, it was just me and her. Mm -hmm. And so um, just watching her life, you know, my mom is a wonderful lady. She prayed for me all the time. I can say I'm here today because of her prayers. Like I remember she's smearing anointing oil on my head while I'm sleeping. I'm hearing her prayers for me, and I'll go to school with anointing oil on my head. People laugh at me. Me, you know, so my mom is wonderful. She loved God, all of that. But I did see, you know, her struggles and 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 everything through, you know, just her her own life, and uh, that right there kind of affected me because I saw God as this powerful God. But then I used to wonder, well, if He's so powerful, how come people's lives are not really changing? Mm -hmm. And that was a question that came to me over and over. So I'm like, it can't be real. And so that led up to the encounter that I had in college. Yeah, tell us about that. What what happened in that encounter? So in college, again, I told you guys I was, I was, you know, doing rap music. So, um, I was traveling. I went a lot of places to Vegas, to New York, to all different places, uh, just doing rap music and, uh, had an opportunity to open up for major artists. And it was, it was amazing time, you know, in that time, it was amazing. And, um, but I always knew that there was something different with me. Like God had a plan for my life that he was going to change my situations and bring me into what I need to be, um, as a leader. I just knew there was something different. Uh, so when I went to college, um, I was in fornication. Um, that was one of the things that I say my major struggle was fornication. I didn't drink. I didn't do drugs. That was nothing I, I wanted to do because, of, again, looking at my family, seeing them strung out on drugs and drinking alcohol, it's just some, something I said I'm going to stay away from because I didn't want to go down that same path. But um, fornication was big. So I would have different girls like all the time. And I reached a moment in college where I said, I'm tired of this lifestyle. I said, I need to know if this God that I serve, that I felt when I was young, his presence, I need to know if it's real. So I went into, I like to call it a prayer closet because it was so huge. I had a washer and dryer in there i had like all of my clothes it was it was a big closet and so i went in there and i began to pray it was it was a saturday night 
I'll never forget it. It was from nine. It was well, it was Saturday. It was nine a.m. all the way to nine p.m. I prayed that long, praying to God, asking Him to uh, come into my life, asking Him to show me if He's real. I said, Lord, if You're real, You need to show Yourself to me like right now. I felt Your presence. You know, I remember being in, in some of them services and people lay hands on you, you fall out and you get up and you think you're different, but then you go back with the same struggles. And I'm like, God, no, I don't, I don't want any of that to happen in, in here today. I need to know that You are real and you're the true and living God. And I kept praying and crying, praying and crying, praying and crying, and nothing happened in that closet. Like, I didn't feel anything. All I know is I was emotional because I wanted to change. So I got up out of that closet. I said, no, he's not real. You know, all this stuff I've been doing and experiencing is just all emotions. So I grabbed my broom and I began to sweep. And like a mighty rushing wind, here come the Holy Spirit into my apartment, knocks me face first on the ground. And for the first time, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm speaking in a whole nother language. And I'm like, this is totally new for me. I look up and here's this cloud hovering over me. And I knew it was real. Like I thought I was like hallucinating at first, but like I didn't take any drugs or anything. So I just thought that I'm having this mental breakdown or something. But I knew it was real because my dog, I had a little dog. And she saw the same thing I was seeing. She was looking up at it and was barking and like running in circles. And I'm looking up and there's this cloud that appears before me. And out of this cloud, a voice comes and it says, Anthony, I called you to be a prophet to the nations. I'm going to use you. And what I want you to do at this time is I want you to leave school and I want you to go back home. I'm going to raise you up to be a worship leader and I'm going to use you in a great capacity. The prophetic is going to be something that you master. And um, I'm just going to do a lot of different things in your life. And so that's what I remember clear as day. And I was just bawling. I got up off that ground. I picked up the phone and the first person I called was my mom and she was in church and she was just praying for me too. <laughs> Cause I said, mom, guess what? Guess what? And she said, what baby what i said i just had an encounter with jesus and she started crying on the phone she said i was just at church i was praying for you i was praying that god do something for you and we were just crying on the on the on the phone and man i can tell you that was the day that i fell in love with christ because he showed himself to me he showed me how real he really was and um i started looking the scriptures to find out what i experienced and in exodus and in uh and, and chronicles like all of those mentioned when God would show up, it said he would show up like a cloud or the smoke would fill the temples when they were praying. Like when Solomon prayed, it talked talk about how the smoke filled the temple. So I literally saw that in real life and a voice from heaven came down and spoke over me. It was so powerful. Man, just for fun here, I just want to clarify this. So uh, when you say you got knocked down on your face. Yes, sir. Like, was it like, like literal? You just felt like... Tell us a little bit more about that that experience. So that experience was, I can't explain it. It's more so of a heaviness that came on me, a weightiness that came to my body, and I couldn't stand up. Mm. It's kind of like what uh, John uh, described whenever he was receiving the revelation. Uh, it said that he fell first like a, like a dead man. He fell like a dead man. That's what it felt like to me. I wow. just fell first, face first, and I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. All I could do was cry because I felt this overwhelming presence, this overwhelming joy. And then as I tried to talk, here's another language. <laughs> so I'm like, this is all new to me. I've never experienced anything like that because the church I was in, they didn't speak in tongues. They didn't have a move of a spirit like that. Yeah. So this was all new for me. And man, it was it was the most amazing experience. Like I said, I was marked forever. Hmm. Talk to us about your life after did you did you share this did you continue to share this encounter with people did you keep it to yourself what what happened after that so i kind of kept it to myself because um when you have an encounter like that you try to process this like i don't know if anyone's like me but i kept trying to process it like did this really happen like am i am i tripping you know like did this really happen and so i kind of kept it to myself i shared it with my mom i shared it with a few people i know but i didn't go out and just spread it but i didn't listen to what god told me to do though you know i didn't go directly home because i felt like i go home i'm a failure you know like i'm not going home so uh, wait so you telling me you saw this cloud yep. manifest in front of you and still didn't do what 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 he was saying? No. I always tell people there's three voices that come to you. 
You know, you have the voice of the enemy that speaks to you, the voice of the world, and then you have um, your voice. And the voice in me was like, if you do that, people are going to look at you as a failure, even though God is telling you. But if you do that, you're going to be a failure. And, hey, man, you here, you working on this rap album. You need to finish that up, man. Your life is going to go, you know, you want it to be successful. You got to finish this up. But here's a twist. I said, I'm going to work on this rap album, but it's going to be, um, you know, different. It's going to be more positive. And that's what I kept telling myself. God's not going to be mad at this because it's, it's going to be positive now. <laughs> so I went on to uh, start working on this rap album. And I, I left from there. Me and the producer I was working with, we went to uh, St. Louis to finish up the album. And that's when God really caught my attention. It was a Jonah, ex uh, Jonah experience for sure. I went to St. Louis. The moment we got there, at a red light. Now, I had all my clothes. I had my jewelry. Because at the time, you know, as a rapper, you got to have all of that stuff. I had the Jesus piece. I had the nice watches and all the clothes and, and shoes and everything. And uh, we stopped at the stoplight. Next thing that I know, his car stops. And we start smelling smoke. And he had one of these cars where the battery was in the back seat. I've never seen anything like it. But something happened with this battery and it and the car just stopped. Smoke comes up and I'm in the back seat and I'm like panicking. And his his cousin was next to me. And then there was two others that was in the front. He he was in the driver's seat. Then there was another guy in the front. They all just rush out of the car and I'm the last person to get out. So my foot, as soon as it hits the ground, I'm I'm looking to my right and here's uh fire just shoots up in the back seat and everything that I had with me it's gone like all of my 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 clothes my jewelry my money my phone and I had my bible with me and it was all tore up in that car and a voice from heaven came to me and said I told you to go home I said you was a prophet to the nations and I'm going to use you you got to get home because I'm gonna raise you up to be a worship leader like the same rehearsed words and I'm crying and they're thinking oh this guy is crying because he lost his stuff like no guys I am crying because the Lord told me to go home and I didn't listen and that's what I share with all of them I called my mom my mom came and got me from St. Louis I went home it was a Sunday that I got home we went to church that same day and all I had was sweats and a t-shirt. That's all I had to go to church. And when I got there, it was one of those Sundays that, you know, God ordained those Sundays. Cause it's like whatever, everything the pastor is saying, he's speaking to you, like about your whole life, about, you know, running from God. And like, it was all of that. Right. And, uh, at, towards the end of the service, he, um, actually called on me and said, Anthony, can you come up and sing? And I'm like, he don't know what I, just been through it. I'm, I just walked away from God, you know, what he told me to do. I'm running and now you want me to sing? I was like, uh, but I was obedient. I went up and sang. Power of God was in there. You know, people was worshiping. People was receiving. Things was happening in the atmosphere and God was touching me. And at the end of the service, here he come. My pastor says, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want to make you the worship leader. And that's where it all started. <laughs> From there, God just started doing a quick work and I started learning the, you know, atmosphere, started learning the prophetic. Everything he said he was going to do in my life, he did it from that day forward. Anthony, how long have you been walking faithfully with Jesus now? So it was from 2010. So, man, for 13. about 13 years yeah, now. 13 years. 13 years. Yeah, looking back at these 13 years, um, what have you seen God do in your life? Now going on that journey with him, he He made you a promise. He began to take you through that promise. But now 13 years in, what has he done in your life? Man, 13 years in, God has proven to be who he said he is in my life. Uh, everything he told me came to pass as far as learning the the atmosphere, learning worship, learning the prophetic. Uh, he started teaching me that there. So I started writing songs and they weren't just your normal songs. They were songs that just changed atmospheres and miracles begin to manifest and happen. Like I seen so many miracles, cancer being healed and all kind of stuff. And, you know, people getting delivered from evil spirits, like the same things you read about in the scripture where David is playing and, and Saul, you know, and the evil spirit comes off of him. Like I've seen that in, 
in real life just through the worship that God was, you know, training me and pushing me in. And then he didn't just leave me in the area of worship. He shifted me to, to speaking, to preaching. And I started getting revelations of the scriptures. He started downloading um, his word in me and I couldn't contain it anymore. I had to start preaching. And um, when I got married in 2013, that's when me and my wife, we got together and we decided to go and branch out and do ministry on our own. And we've been doing ministry ever since. And God been using us to uh, lay hands on the sick, to all kind of things. Like I can just go on and on about all of the promises that God has said and he was going to do in my life. He actually did it and I'm walking in it right now. Anthony, who is Jesus to you? I could say that Jesus is everything. I know that sounds cliche, but to me, he's everything. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be sitting here doing this interview. I wouldn't be talking, you know, preaching or prophesying or doing anything without Jesus. Uh, I learned how to have a real relationship with him outside of my mom, outside of my pastors, to really get to know him on my own. And from that, I got an understanding of who I am in him. Because, you know, people would tell you all the time, you know, who you are. And I was confused. I was thinking I'm going to be this rapper. I'm thinking I'm going to be this big person that's going to have all this money and people going to respect and, and look up to. But I'm just a, a, a little guy from Jacksonville that God uses to speak into people's lives and for miracles and healing. That all became because Christ loved me enough to pull me out of my mixed up life Wanting to be with him, but then doing rap at the same time, but bringing me into a pure lifestyle. Um, and from that day forward, like again, I, my life has never been the same since I met him. And that's why I owe everything to him. Man. Anthony, for, for the people who are watching your testimony right now and uh, are maybe relating to that part of running away from the calling, you know, you saw a manifestation of God, a physical manifestation, and still ran. Reminds me of the Israelites, right? Yep. Um, but for people who are watching and are connecting and they themselves are running, what's a word of encouragement that you can give them? When it comes to just running away from God, I can understand because you have these insecurities. And again, I named those three voices that will speak to you. <laughs> and sometimes those voices sound so true. Just how the enemy came to Eve and, and told her, surely you will not die. But he he already knew that they was going to be cast out of that place. He knew that something was going to happen that was going to affect a generation. And a lot of times we listen to that voice because we don't realize what God can actually do. Because we want God to, when he show himself to us, we want to see the full picture. We want to see that he's going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. But no, when he got called on you, you're still going to have some struggles. You're still going to have some issues, but it's not your job to, to try to fight that. I had to make a conscious decision after all of the things that I experienced in my life. I had to make a conscious decision to just turn around and come to him and say, God, I'm coming to you the way that I am exactly where you called me. And I'm going to allow you to work on me and to change my life. And I, again, I grew to love him and I grew to understand who he was. And that's how you won't run. Because when you know how good of a father he is and how gracious he is and how loving he is, why wouldn't you want to be there? I'm like, I'm like David, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, Lord, whatever you do, don't take your spirit away from me. And that's my heart today. I don't want to run from it and I don't want you to take it from me. And that's how that's the place I want to call you who may be going through that or feel like I have to run. No, go to him because it's going to be one of the greatest, the greatest experience that you have ever had in your life and the greatest decision you have ever made in your life. And your life is going to be forever changed. Anthony, you, you went from secular music, yes, sir. creating secular music to now making uh, music for the Lord. Yes. Can you just give a word of encouragement to, to those that believe coming to Christianity means, well, I just have to stop what I'm doing. I just have to stop uh, making music, right, overall. What, what's a word of encouragement that you can give to those people 
that uh, have that mindset that they can't continue to be creative because walking with Jesus would stop them from doing that. So I believe in God being the creator of creativity. And when I decided that I'm going to continue to make music in his presence, my ear started to change. And when I say my ear, I mean, I started to hear things different. Like I think the sounds that God gives a person is 10 times better than what the enemy can give. And so I don't care who's the greatest producers out there. Whenever God gives somebody a sound, that sound is going to break uh, barriers like uh, racial barriers, uh, whatever barrier is going to do things that just other music just can't do. And so when you see that, when you start making music for Christ can change someone's life, like, like literally change it, you kind of get addicted to that. So those of you that may be struggling with you doing secular because you may feel like, well, it's okay. You know, the, the songs of Solomon is here. He was talking about love. He was talking about this, but God had to show me something to get me out of it. And then I'm going to share that to you really quickly i was doing a performance with a well-known rapper and i had to open up and it was my turn to get on the stage and i got on stage i did my thing when i came down a voice began to speak to me and said i need you to go to the back and i didn't understand why i was hearing this voice but i went to the back of the the club that we was in where we was performing i sat there and it said watch i just heard a word a voice said watch and i started to look and this rapper started rapping and doing what he do, but my eyes opened, and not to be super deep or super spiritual, but it really happened. My eyes opened to the spirit realm where I saw these shadows, it was like dark shadows, coming out of his mouth through every word that he was doing, saying, and go into the people. And I started to see how people started changing, like they started getting more violent. The girls started getting more seductive and all of this. And next thing you know, gunshots just started to happen in the club. I run out and I'm just bawling and crying. I'm like, this is what you wanted me to see. That day was a day that I said, that music is, I'm done. Because if I can make music that can affect a generation like that, cause them to, to go in a different direction, to spark up violence, to spark up fornication, I don't want any part of that God. And so the Lord said, the same, um, he said, the same spirits that torment you while you're making your music or torment others. That was the turning point. I don't want to do that. I want to be a person that's going to affect a generation that causes them to run towards God, live a pure life, happy life, full of joy life, not a life that comes with consequences. And when you see the effects that the other music have on the lives of a generation, it will cause you to change. And I pray that God will open your eyes to see that. Anthony, any last words for people who are watching your testimony right now? Yes, I want to share with those that may be dealing with, you know, like I was in church, but then a little bit out of it, like not even just doing secular music. Maybe you're struggling in your flesh. Maybe you have some sort of issue that's just got you feeling like God is maybe a way or, you know, you're, you're still trying to serve, but you're really dealing with something. Well, I want to let you know that there is a, a way to get out of that. And to be in right standing with God is, again, we are made righteousness through Christ Jesus. And all you have to do is come to him again, where whatever situation you have, come and bring it to him. Cast your cares because he cared for you and lay it there and say, Lord, I want you to help me to overcome anything that is blocking me from having everything that you have for me. I don't want anything to block it. I don't want I don't want my desires to block it. I don't want my own will to block it. I don't want an issue in my flesh to block it. God, I want everything that you have for me. And when I made that decision to do that, again, my life was totally changed. You can do that today. You don't need someone to walk you through that. You know, I mean? I'm not saying uh, a pastor is bad and all the different things, but it's something about when you get to know Christ on your own, that's how you get to know him and live for him because we are made in the image of God. But one of the other things that it, it, the scriptures tells us is that we are the bride of Christ. That means we're in a marriage to him. It's a, it's not anything perverted about it. It's a commitment that we have to Christ. It's, it's a, it's a connection. It's a, it's a intimate relationship that takes us to a whole nother dimension in our faith 
once we learn how to get close to him, draw near to God, he'll draw near unto you. So I wanted to say to those of you that may have that struggle of mixtures and they're saying, like, I have other things in my life, give it to God and your life will never be the, uh, never be the same. And Denny, for those who are receiving what you are saying right now, um, could you just pray for them as uh, they are watching right now? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that's watching that that's struggling with what I uh, mentioned, God, whether it's, again, whatever their issue is, God, you know. It's not my business. It's not no one else's business. But, God, you know. And so, Father, I'm praying right now that you would give them the strength. Your word says that we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. Father, you are the one that gives us the power to overcome flesh. You're the one who gives us power to overcome the enemy. It's not through our own ways. It's not through our own uh, prayers or through our own fasting. Yes, that works. But ultimately, you are the one that has the power. And so, Father, I'm praying that you will begin to minister to them and cause them to lay down their own strength to pick up yours. We boast in our weaknesses so that your strength can be made known. And so, Father, wherever they are that's watching this, I pray that your spirit will begin to touch them right now and break them free and draw them closer to you. God, there is no distance in the spirit. As I make this declaration, whatever chain that is on them can be broken because of your anointing, because of your love and your grace. And so I release that over them right now. And I declare that they are pushed into their destiny and that they no longer have to run. They no longer have to hide, but that they can turn to you and be forever changed in Jesus name. Amen.